There's a certain brand of creationist out there, Kent, I'm talking to you, who believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old, humans lived alongside dinosaurs, and evolution is some satanic hoax. And my word, do they come up with some terrible arguments when it comes to evolution, or well, fear not, because even if you aren't sure what to say to these people, then you'll be very happy to know that in today's video, we will be looking at the five worst arguments creationists use against evolution. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, on with today's video then, which as you'll know from the intro is a rundown of the five worst arguments creationists use against evolution. And we will start with probably the dumbest of them all. If we come from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? This argument is so popular, it should probably have its own museum exhibit. But here's the thing, we didn't come from monkeys, we share a common ancestor with them. That ancestor lived millions of years ago and split into different evolutionary branches. One eventually became us, the other becoming today's monkeys and apes. Chimpanzees aren't our grandparents, they're our distant cousins. We didn't evolve from them, we evolved alongside them from a common source. And in the case of the chimpanzee, that common ancestor between a chimpanzee and us was a chimpanzee-like creature that lived between six and eight million years ago. If you go further back, you come across the common ancestor between us and chimpanzees and gorillas. Now that creature lived between eight and 10 million years ago. You can keep going back, finding older and older common ancestors as well. It's an odd one, because if evolution meant that every ancestor had to disappear before a new species could form, there'd only ever be one species alive at a time, ever. So next time someone says this, ask them if they think Americans shouldn't exist because British people still do. Let's move on to the next argument from creationists, and this is another classic. Evolution is just a theory. This one hinges on a massive misunderstanding, and sometimes a deliberate misuse of the word theory. In everyday English, theory means a guess or a hunch. In science though, a theory is something else entirely. It's something that explains a broad range of phenomena, is supported by a massive body of evidence, has stood up to repeated testing and falsification attempts. Gravity is a theory, germs causing disease is a theory, but you wouldn't jump off a cliff saying gravity is a theory, would you? Or wipe your toast all over a dirty floor saying, germ theory is just a theory. The theory of evolution in a scientific sense explains the diversity of life on Earth. It's supported by things like the fossil record, genetics, embryology, radiometric dating, and direct observation of evolutionary changes in species. In fact, evolution is so fundamental in modern biology that Nobel winning discoveries in medicine, agriculture, and conservation all rely on it. Creationists love this argument because it sounds like they're just asking questions. But what they're really doing is misrepresenting the language of science. If you don't accept the use of scientific theories, then you shouldn't use a smartphone. It runs on quantum theory and electromagnetism. Just a theory though, right? The next argument from creationists then is one of the worst they use against evolution, and actually one that bugs me a lot. There are no transitional fossils. Creationists treat the fossil record like a Netflix series, where missing one episode means the whole plot doesn't make sense. Let's start with this. Transitional fossils absolutely exist, and we have thousands of them. Some of the big ones include Tiktaalik, a fish with wrists and proto-lungs literally crawling onto land 375 million years ago. Archaeopteryx, a dinosaur bird hybrid with feathers and teeth. Basilosaurus, a whale ancestor with tiny useless legs. And Australopithecus afarensis, our good friend Lucy, walking upright 3.2 million years ago with a brain smaller than yours, but bigger than this argument. What creationists really mean here is, you haven't shown me a fossil that's exactly halfway between two animals I recognize. But that's not how evolution works. Changes are gradual. There's no moment where a dog gives birth to a dolphin. I swear they think evolution on Earth happens like Pokemon evolution. Also, every fossil is transitional. It's just that we're seeing snapshots in time. Expecting a fossil for every single generation is like expecting CCTV footage of every single ancestor you've ever had. And let's be honest, if we did find that perfect in-between, 
They'd just say it was fake. Because it's not about the fossils really, is it? It's about defending a worldview. Right, moving on to our fourth argument then, and this is one that creationists love to use. The old irreducible complexity argument, or complexity proves there was a designer, so evolution is fake. This is the watchmaker argument. If you found a watch in the sand, you would assume that it had a designer, so therefore, life has a designer too. Here's the problem though. Watches don't reproduce or mutate or compete for survival. Biological organisms do. Evolution explains complexity through natural selection, a non-random process that preserves beneficial mutations over time. Even extreme complexity like the human eye evolved gradually. And here's a fun fact. Eyes have evolved independently over 40 times in nature. Some are just simple light sensitive spots, others have lenses, irises, retinas, and some are better than ours. Looking at you, the octopus, and some are just awful. Sorry about that naked mole rat. And there's even evidence of bad design, which makes no sense under intelligent design. The laryngeal nerve in a giraffe loops down to the chest and back again. 15 feet of wasted wiring. The human eye has a blind spot and backward wiring. The panda's thumb is a wrist bone doing a terrible job of impersonating a real digit. This isn't design, it's jury rigged adaptation. Built by nature over eons. Nature doesn't design, it selects. If anything, the flaws in biology disprove the idea of a perfect designer. Well, that brings us swiftly onto argument number five then, which is there is no evidence for macro evolution. Here's where creationists try to draw an artificial line between macroevolution and microevolution. They'll say, sure, finch beaks can change, but bacteria can mutate, but that's not a new species. So let's first define the terms. Microevolution is small genetic changes within a population. Macroevolution is large scale changes that result in new species or genus over a long time. They are not two separate processes. Macroevolution is just microevolution extended over time. We have observed speciation happening in insects like fruit flies isolated in labs, in plants where chromosome duplication causes new fertile species, and some examples of fish in African lakes, which have exploded into hundreds of distinct species. And the genetics backs it up. Humans share over 98% of our DNA with chimps, over 85% with mice, and around 60% with bananas. Yes, you're more banana than you'll probably like to admit. So to say that there's no evidence for macroevolution is to ignore a lot of things. Genetics, fossils, direct observation, logic, and probably most of high school biology. So there you have it, the five worst arguments creationists use against evolution. They range from misunderstanding science to outright intellectual sabotage. But here's the truth, you don't have to believe in evolution. It doesn't require faith, it requires evidence. And that evidence is overwhelming, consistent, and testable. If your argument against evolution hasn't changed since the 1800s, it's probably time to evolve your thinking. Let me know what you thought of this list and if there's any arguments that you think should have been included in the comments below. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another episode. Thanks so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Remember, we're on daily videos now. I don't want you to miss one. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for a Flat Earth Friday where the one and only CC joins us again. See you then.